so that there is no vitamin C that I have or anybody else's that's, that's going to avoid the process of being metabolized. That's, you remember, that's why we use the vitamin C intravenously when we treat cancer, because it is metabolized inside of your cells. And you remember, vitamin C looks so much to the cancer cell, it looks just like sugar. In fact, at one time, if you and I were a mouse, uh, we would simply, all the sugar we eat with the enzyme called L-galanolactone, we would convert our sugar immediately to vitamin C. And if I was a mouse weighing what I weigh, I would be making around 12,000 milligrams of C unless I was under attack, then I would be making 18,000. So the, the trick is to understand that vitamin C is going to get metabolized, but one of the reasons we use it in the IV treatment form of cancer is inside the cell, it actually becomes hydrogen peroxide. So it's part of oxidative therapy, and I'm on the board of oxidative medicine where we use things like ozone, ultraviolet blood, and the hydrogen peroxide trick, which is what we're discussing here, is how can vitamin C help you through this hydrogen peroxide trick, which causes the cancer cell to have to commit suicide. How fascinating. So, for example, would people take your vitamin C product or the product of the Longevity Plus at longevityplus.com four times a day? Well, so that's the point. If you are a cancer patient, then here's, the, here's an easier way to look at well, what it. What if you're not a cancer patient? Okay, so here's the point. Uh, what, that's the reason we're so important to have the test. The vitamin C stick test tells you that based on how Try to understand where you sit today is an amalgamation of your genetic power to handle all the toxins you've been exposed to, the toxins that came into you from whatever your mother and father, because they're all involved in this picture. And when you get down to the final analysis, some of us, we call that your oxidant load. In other words, if you are loaded with lead, mercury, cadmium, and all of these xenobiotics, the adoxin, the PCB, you're going to need more C than the next person to keep your urine in the healthy range because vitamin C is going to be utilized in fighting those bad guys. And so that's why the test is so powerful. By having the test, most people assuming that you've, uh, you've been teaching all this, you should be a healthy person. So technically, you should be able to stay in the bright yellow color on the vitamin C stick test by just wetting the urine morning and night. If, if you've taken it at 9 in the morning, at 9 at night, you should still be close to the yellow color, meaning you're well protected. But if you are so loaded with toxins and during the day you're putting down three martinis and, and having your cigarettes and you're following a bus on the way to work uh, and breathing all the exhaust, then obviously by noon you may have used up all the C and your test would be back in the green color. So that empowers you to measure how much you need to protect you with your genes and your environment. I think that a lot of what you're saying makes total sense, but it seems as if for outsiders, the whole vitamin C contribution has become elusive over the years. A lot of people in the know, like yourself, know, but again, the delivery system, how it gets to your body has been key, and a lot of people whose stomachs couldn't handle too many grams of vitamin C was the issue, right? I'm glad you said it that way because when I introduced this vitamin C, I took it to the uh, conventions of my doctor friends. And my friend that helped develop it, Wayne Harris, would be at there. And we would put the vitamin C in a, in, in, in a nice cold drink. And as they would walk by, we'd just give them a cup. And we'd say, there's two grams of vitamin C in here. And half of the doctors would say, I can't handle two grams. I'm here at this conference. I'll be in the toilet with it. <laughs> and, so, and so we said, well, you'll be the first one. Because so far, we've been able to treat, have a thousand doctors. And they took the two grams. And they later came back and said, that didn't bother me. And they took another two grams during the next break. And the next break, they took, in the end of the day, I have doctors who've never had 10 or 15 or 20 grams. They say, I don't know. I could feel so good because the C is, see, these doctors have all been in that trap. Half of the doctors never took enough vitamin C because of the gut problem. It's just amazing. It's still, the, the, it, but they understand we have 1,200 references that vitamin C will treat virtually every toxic. I mean, you're talking about vitamin C being able to protect our children. If they get vaccinated, you want them on vitamin C, you're going to cut down dramatically how many are going to get a complication from the vaccines that are occurring. So obviously we want to be protected 24-7 and it's wonderful to empower the public. Spend 10 bucks, buy the vitamin C check test. It's got 50 tests in it and test yourself and find out what it takes to keep you 
having a bright future. In fact, uh, <laughs> brightspot.org was the name of the, of the cancer clinic that Dr. <laughs> Rudin started. And what did it mean, bright spot? It meant that he wants you to do that check <laughs> and, and always have that little spot going from green to yellow because then you're going to have a bright future because your body is protected at all times. He was the guy that actually tested his own blood. And he wound up, uh, when he got on a flight at the, air, at the airport, uh, he, he knew it's it pretty stressful, as you know, going through getting to, <laughs> through the security and everything. So he, he took a big dose of vitamin C at like 8 o'clock in the morning, drove to the airport, got on the plane, and, and, and at 11 o'clock in the morning, he was on the plane, he was in the air, and he walked into the bathroom and stuck himself in the drink and drew his blood to see how much vitamin C he still had. It was 98% gone. That's what stress does to us. So that's why I mentioned that if you were a mouse or a rat and you weigh what I weigh, you'd be making 12 grams a day. Stress increases their automatic ability to raise vitamin C. It's so, it's so documented. And Tom Levy's book, Curing the Incurable, is widely available. He's got a new book, which I've just written the forward to, and it's called Primal Placebo. Because, uh, it, in other words, vitamin C is so good, we're going to have to call it a placebo because if it treats depression and helps with your arthritis and helps your IQ and ha- it helps you avoid being sick, it's got to be a placebo because no one thing can do all that. <laughs> so his new book, is, it will be out in a month or two. I just wrote the forward to it. It's a great book, and we're going to help bring this vitamin C story because it's one, the public resonates with vitamin C. They, they remember Linus Pauling a little bit, and they kind of remember that about 70% of people do buy, they do buy some vitamin C, but then they, then they get frightened when they see a report that is put in by somebody who's on the other side, like Victor Herbert, who says, oh, it destroys vitamin B12. It was a totally fraudulent article, but anytime they can attack the nutrients, they'll publish that immediately. Look what they're doing now with walnuts. They're going to try to make them illegal, banned from even eating them. I read the Life Extension magazine. I was shocked. <laughs> it's just amazing because it has been such a healthy food, and it, 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 it's done more for people than the statins ever did. <laughs> so it's just amazing what's going on. I have a question about the difficult part of the radiation that's coming here from the Japan catastrophes. Talk about it in the context of what you're advising people to do now. Well, interestingly enough, I used to be in radiology, and so having been in radiology, I really had to look into the safety of the, of the environment I was working in, because if I was doing an upper GI on a patient, I was sitting right there in front bombarding myself with the radiation. So I really wanted to learn how tough is my body, and I was astonished to find that at the Atomic Energy Commission, we had in Northridge, we had some workers that accidentally got exposed to extremely high levels. And so we actually had some, some way to follow these people and find out what happened because, of course, with that very high level of radiation exposure, uh, they all became sterile and they had, they had no sperm. And so obviously you would assume then that that would be a, a, the permanent damage to their body. But it turns out that, you know, when you're a little younger, and that's why I, in order to stay younger, I do my pulse electromagnetic field, I do my sauna, I do my exercise, I do all this stuff. When you're a little younger, you have the ability to do dramatic DNA repair enzymes. And amazingly enough, it wasn't but 10 years later, many of these that guys that had been sterilized with that high a dose of exposure actually now had return of sperm and Many of them impregnated their wives and had healthy, normal babies. That's, that's what's changed my attitude so that I try to teach people that if you really understood what your blood test results would look like, and you can find it. You, you go to my website and watch CNN Toxic America and watch or just go to ewg.org, that's environmentworkinggroup.org, and see what would be in you because there has never been a person that can pass the test at Mount Sinai School of Medicine. So I don't want you to spend 4900 bucks. Just learn what's in you because you've, there isn't a person we test that doesn't have these carcinogens, neurotoxins, and endocrine disruptors. It's in everybody. So that's what makes me so mad. Because you go to the doctor, you say you're depressed, or you can't think, or you're too fatigued, or you're losing your memory, and oh, they got, they got a drug for it. And no one ever is treating the... I mean, let, let's look at the latest studies 
that absolutely should confound everybody. If we just look at uh, the studies, let's talk, talk for one second about cancer. The New York Times showing how extremely expensive the things are, like Avastin, how little proof is that ever. 